Recently, I have started learning to use Arduinos, and I hesitate to put this on my channel because in the past, if I was looking at a project and it mentioned Arduino, I just turned it off and I moved on to something else because I had no interest in that. I was around back in the 80s when computers started and you know, you did computer programming and stuff like that and it was just tedious and monotonous and boring and I hated it. And so anything thinking about programming something just turned me off. Now, my son is an engineer and he understood that frustration that I had and he told me one day he said you know dad you should look at doing these things again because it's gotten so much easier now they have example code that you can use and they also have libraries so if you want to use a certain sensor there's probably a library that comes with it that basically all you have to do is load that library onto your Arduino and then just tell it how this sensor is connected to your Arduino and basically it'll just put out the information that you want. And I was like, okay, well that sounds really good. So a few months ago, I uh, messed up my foot and I was stuck in my chair for about a week trying to let it heal. And so I thought, well, you know what? This is a good opportunity. So I watched some videos by this guy named Paul McWhorter and I'll put a link to it in the description for you. He is a professor, Does the, he did a really good job of teaching it. He starts very basic, so if you don't know anything about electronics, you can get up and run it. Now he is kind of long-winded and he took longer than I would have liked and it was kind of, some of it was a little tedious, but he does a really good job of showing you things that are common mistakes that people do and reiterating things that people forget. So all in all, it was a really good experience to do that. Now he uses this kit right here. It's called the uh, Elegoo Most Complete Starter Kit. I'll link to this in the description for you. He uses actually a kit that's a little smaller than this one, but I wanted this one because it had all the different sensors and all that kind of stuff. Let me show you in here now. This one's not what it looks like because I have added and, and taken stuff out of here. I've just kind of used it as a, a uh, sorting thing, but it's it, it, in this kit, they're gonna show you how to use joysticks and. This is an LED display, real-time clocks and servos and other displays and mo servo motors. This shows you a ton of the things that come in the kit. And this is really all, if you have this kit, it also comes with an Uno. So if you have this kit and you watch those videos, by the time you get done, and you don't have to watch all the videos, the first, it, you're gonna have to watch a bunch of them, but the first, oh, 15, 20 of them, uh, get you up and running and then he just starts kind of going through how to use all the different sensors But you'll by the time you get there you'll understand the the language and all of that Which is what's really important by using this kit and watching his videos It got me started and in the past couple of months I was able to take the remote controls for my garage gates that open up on my property so I was able to read the codes off the remotes and then put those into an Arduino by just basically all the codes written for me. I just have to, in the spots where I have to put in the, the specific codes for my gate and then hook up the wiring like it says to, and the thing works. So it really has, he was right, it really has gotten much, much easier. Now there's a learning curve and there is some, still some things to figure out as you go along. So let me show you some of the different microcontrollers that I actually bought. So here's the Uno that came with that kit. This is a Nano. It's basically the same thing. It's just smaller and cheaper. It, uses, it has less power and it uses has uh, fewer pins that you can actually access on it. Now, this is actually my favorite. It is an ESP32. These run uh, between three and five dollars depending on how you buy them. And they come with different uh, power ports. So this is where you plug in your DC power. This is a, I think it's a micro USB. They also come in USB-C and other ones. This one you can get, and you can get it for the Uno too, but this one you can buy this terminal board. And so you can plug this thing in like that. And then you've got screw terminals on the sides and you've got places here that you can just stick wires in when you're prototyping things. On this particular one, it can be kind of hard to find a terminal board that actually goes with the specific ESP32 you have. So I'm going to, I'll link both of these in the description. So if you want this configuration, you can actually find some that'll uh, match up. This is a D1 Mini 
which is even smaller than that. This is what I used to make the remote for my car. And then another thing I've used a lot of are these little relays. These are only like a dollar. So an Uno or an ESP32 will power a LED or something like that just directly from the board. I think it's 200 milliamps uh, per pin that it can power. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's about, it's, it's not very much. And so if you need to power more than that, then you just run it through a relay. And these will power 10 amps at 250 volts AC or 30 volts DC, different amounts. These are, these are very handy and very cheap. Those of you that watch my channel know that I like automation and those types of things. And so this allows you to automate things, figure out the programming and all that for yourself so that you can do exactly what you want with the automation and the sensors and the things like that that you want to run. So that's why I got into it and I've really enjoyed it. it. Like I said, it was much easier than I thought it was going to be. Don't worry, my channel's not going to turn into Arduino all the time, but you will see it crop up some here and there. Like I said, I don't expect it to be a lot of, a lot of the videos that I'll do, but it will crop up some. In the next few videos, I'm going to do one just to show you how easy it is, what we're going to do is in, in the next video is we're going to take an Arduino and use it to turn an LED on and off, but using your phone over the internet to turn a, uh, an LED on and off remotely. So in other words, you could hook up a water pump somewhere and you could turn it off and on from your office. You're gonna be shocked at just how easy it is to do that. Okay, another interesting thing that I learned was that you can use ChatGPT, one of the new AI programs. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy about AI, AI programs and I understand all that and I had the same concerns, but using it to help you write code for a local thing, it, it works great. And now there's, you know, it's not as smart as it thinks it is. And so you have to play with it. So I'll do a video about uh, how you can use AI to write code uh, for these types of things. All right, well, I hope this was interesting to you and kind of makes you want to kind of look into it and see what you think. Just go in and watch a few of the videos and see what you think if that's something that you would like to do. In the next video, I'll show you just how easy it is to set one of these up and make it work with the libraries and the examples that are already out there for you. Hope this was interesting to you. Thank you for watching.